CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Welcome back to our studios here in New York, everyone, for Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg at halftime of the game in Greensboro, UCLA, with a 30-19 to 19 lead on Utah State. Take a look at Utah State earlier in the game when they were scoring points. Tony <laughs> Brown with the open three to give the Aggies an early three-point lead. Then they went dry for a while while UCLA was putting together a nice little run. Long inbounds past Barnes to Bailey. Penetration and pitch. And Jason Capono with that kind of time knocks down the three. All right, Clark, we said it before. We will say it again. This is the tournament. You cannot go as ice cold as Utah State is and expect to be successful. Give UCLA some credit because of their defensive pressure, but Utah State got plenty of good looks. I think they rushed them. They've got to settle down and knock down the good shots they get against the press. All right. Keep in mind that the winner of this game is uh, fighting for the, or the, these two teams are fighting for the right to move on and meet Duke. And uh, in the game in Boise, Maryland is leading Georgia State by a score of 41 to 37. Take a look at the top of the key. Daryl Cooper, Shenard Long off the screen. But then the Terrapin's going to get out in transition. Dixon to Lonnie Baxter. And the throw down, it was tied at 10. And then Juan Dixon looking to find Terrence Morris on the alley-oop. It doesn't work, but Dixon chases down the miss. The Terrapin's up by five. And then Shenard Long again, top of the key, dribbles right, puts it up from the line, hits the three. Maryland's lead 31-29 at that point. They lead at the break 41-37. to And we will be sending you out to Boise, Idaho shortly for live action there. Earlier today, in Greensboro, the Duke Blue Devils, 90. They are just underway at the start of the second half. Georgia State and Maryland, the Terps lead it by four. Let's take you there live. Craig Buller, Jack, and James Worthy. Just the start of the second half here in Boise, Idaho, the Wild West. And it's Georgia State and Maryland, four-point game. Leading scores have been Shenard Long with 16, Juan Dixon with eight for Maryland. It's been a high tempo game in the first 20 minutes. And Craig, I think one of the keys for Maryland is they got Terrace Morris off early in the ball game. He got some block shots and some high percentage shots. But Georgia State has been able to hang around because they've been able to get some offensive boards and also they're shooting better at the free throw line. Foul stops play. Bam Campbell is in foul trouble again. They couldn't get him out. And this should bring him out this time. They'll replace him with uh, Gunsby, the senior from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Well, Campbell, despite his, his height, he's a pretty good post-up player because of his lower body strength. And when Gunsby comes into the ball game, it also gives them, you know, added asset because he has a big body. He defends, as we just see him making the steal. Quick hands for the big guy. Absolutely. And he can take away some of the post position. He's a big kid. They lose some rebounding, though, with Bam Campbell. He's already with six rebounds. See, this is where Gunsby cannot help you. He has no post-up game at all, but he can defend and rebound, and he is a big body that can take up some space in the lane. Is that a good pick, too? Jannard Long, three-pointer around the rim and out. Up high for the rebound, Terrence Morris, who was three of six in the first half for six points. Trying to find his game. Blake, nice feet inside. Little turnaround shot. Oh, should have gone down, came out. Gunsby, another rebound. Well, it should have gone down. It was a tough shot. Now, remember in the first half, Baxter was getting low position. But with Gunsby on him, it's hard to push Gunsby out of the way. So he's having to take a tougher shot. And there's Gunsby receiving the pass off the glass, making a contribution. Two buckets for the big fella, and he's wide, 6'7", 245. And each of those two buckets, James, have come from offensive rebounds, short putbacks. Well, he's a Mack truck down low, and he's not going to be moved. And the Georgia State team has been very active on the offensive boards, and I think that is a major concern for Gary Williams. At the top of the show, remember, Craig, we talked about how Maryland should be able to dominate them with size. First time this game's been tied early. It was 12-12, 41-0. -12. Here in Boise, we played two minutes second half. Baxter in the lane and a whistle. And it's be, it will be called against Gunsby, his third. Well, he feels like he was straight up. But when you go straight up, you can't bring those hands down. That's poor defense and referees. A lot of times, even if you don't foul, when they see the arm in a downward motion, that's cheap defense. You know, Maryland was so effective 
against uh, George Mason in that first game. They 24 27 free throws. They've struggled here in this game. Making the second is Baxter. They have struggled, and they were 10 of 12 in the last four minutes of that game. Here comes a little full court pressure by Maryland. Now you have to get the ball in the center of the court. If you get it in those corners, they're going to trap. And you can't hesitate either. You have to get the ball across and get your offense. Georgia State did a good job of breaking that minor pressure by Maryland. Terrapins by one. Lefty Drizel, the former Maryland head coach against Gary Williams. A lot of talk in Boise about this game. So Maryland with the lead 42 to 41 you know with all the uproar about Lefty Drizel going up against Maryland that's all pregame hype once you get on the floor it's going to be talent in Georgia State showing they can stick with Maryland right now. They've got a strong perimeter game what I'm surprised about is how well they're competing in the paint area because I thought Maryland would have an advantage with their size the longer they stay around the more the pressure goes to Maryland because they're expected to win. OK Clark uh, we thank you for joining us for singular at the half we'll send you back to Greensboro for the second half of UCLA and Utah State right after this. Singular at the half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Four-point game between Maryland and Georgia State, 1540 left. And James, the Terrapins still shooting respectively at 47. Georgia State at 32, but the board play is uh, playing a factor for the Panthers. Free throws, however, I think still that's why Georgia Georgia State hanging around down by four. They're at 76 percent from the line, while Maryland's struggling at 41. And that's the beauty of this game. You can be doing a lot of things good in other categories, like field goal percentage. But if you don't take care of the necessities, like rebounding, good defense, that's going to hurt you. Don't want Georgia State to gain any confidence here, and so far they've been able to hang around. Boy, a tough pass inside Gunsby. I don't know how he found Morris, but back on help defensively was Wilcox. And he'll pick up his first. And Lefty's coaching right now because he would, you know, he's a player that loves to go up and down and shoot the three. But on this half court game, he's done a really good job of incorporating everyone with some back picks. Sunday on 60 Minutes, how does a Florida bean picker get to live like a king? By going to law school and becoming one of America's richest lawyers. Sunday on 60 Minutes. Maryland, as you saw in the first half, got out of their offense. Gary Williams mentioned it at halftime. In the last few possessions, they have been stuck in the mud. They really haven't been in anything. A lot of random offense, and there's a steal by Georgia State. Cooper going to the bucket. Boy, Cooper showing some chips as he gets the layup. Cooper, four points in the first half, his first bucket here. And the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Very unusual for Blake not to have his team settle down. You see, he's trying to call a play right now and get them into something. That's not the shot, I don't think, from out there. Rebound goes out to Long. They try to push the tempo, spins away from Blake. One point game, 47 46. No, great job getting bodies in the air. A little head fake got Wilcox up and also got Holden, 45. Well, that last steal was really impressive because Maryland is trying to cut down the lane. A bad pass. Cooper right there to pick it up off the glass. Two points. But I really like what Lefty is doing. He's posting up Donnie Davis. Donnie Davis is a good pump faker. He's not a great, spectacular score inside. But he's able to get the Maryland Turk and big players up in the air for fouls. And that's going to play a big factor going down the stretch. So James, Donnie Davis knows uh, this program well. Has played all three seasons for Lefty Drizel. It's amazing how you can have a style of play all year long. I mean, you get to the tournament and you have to put a few wrinkles in it. Good pass from Morris to Baxter. Now that's running an offense. Baxter in double figures with 11 breaks the tie. Terrapins by two. You want to double down, you have to be an assist guy out of the post, and that's exactly what Morris did for Baxter. Good backdoor move. Gunsby, though, his pass picked off. Lead pass to oh, Baxter. Dick, good pass and good defense. Well, you got to be impressed with the way Georgia State does get back on defense. Well, they got back that time, and Baxter got away with 
the foul because Morris was going to get that ball. Baxter grabbed him. There's the pass. There's the good defense. Now watch the grab. In the lower left of our camera, we could barely see it there, but he did grab Baxter, did grab Morris for the foul. It was not called. 14 minutes left. Pick and roll up top for Dixon. That's short. a good look, way short. Miller trying to chase it down. Nice save. And Dixon pushed from behind. I really think that Georgia State is the most physical team right now. They're, they're taking the ball inside over the bigger Turpin players, and they're really doing a good job of bumping and grinding and taking away position on the half court set. There's Morris for a three point. He knocked that one down. Let's get Morris. Morris in double figures. We're going to count a two. Excuse me, it was a two. Had his foot on the line. Two pointer, 51 47, Maryland. And you know, I looked over and saw Gary Williams, who's been concerned about his play. Here comes a steal. Dixon up and lays it in. Juan Dixon with 12. But Williams pumped his fist a little bit. He really wants to get Terrence Morris' gears going again. Absolutely. Timeout in Boise. Maryland on a bit of a run. Leading Georgia State 53-47. Maryland over Georgia State and every time Lefty Drizel and his club make that run. I mean, it was 47 all. They just can't get past Maryland right now. You know, the defense picks up and also I think Chenard Long is helping Maryland a little bit because he is the star player for Georgia State. But at some times he tries to force the issue a little bit too much. That last possession Dixon was able to pick it off for the steal. Now Chenard Long had 16 points in the first half as the long three off the mark to Miller. Long has not scored this half. Nice. Alley oh, missed it off the rim. Maryland starting to get their transition game going. Georgia State's done a pretty good job of getting back that time. Just an easy miss by Baxter. Now Shenard's got to be a passion. Now you look at all the dribbling. He's going nowhere. You got to be a passion. Unless you got a direct route or going to make a quick move. Don't dribble in one spot. Good pass to Gunsby. Gunsby loose ball with 12 on the shot clock. Cooper slices in the left hander. Hit the That's a rainbow <laughs> shot. It might start to rain with that one. Remember, Cooper hit the big four point play that kind of secured the win for them. Cooper in game one. Cooper James played his freshman year at LSU. Baxter in close around the rim and now a whistle. Elbow is a call Gunsby. That's going to be four. Well, he's been getting away with pushing while the ball is in the air, thinking that the referees aren't seeing it. It's better to try to box out high as opposed to that cheap push in the back. Referees catch that. They actually, they're going to give that, that foul to Donnie Davis. That's a break. But it didn't last long. On the slap is Gunsby, so now it's four. It just goes to show you that it looked like a clean, but, but watch the arm go down. I mentioned this earlier. If you're going downward, the referees are going to call that, whether it's a clean block or not. You have to be able to use your arms and hands in an upward motion, unless you're a quick guard who knows how to get down in there and dig deep. Big guys do not get away with that defensive move. So out goes Gunsby. And they're going to put in Thomas Terrell, a 6'7, 245 pound junior, Brookhaven, Mississippi. And Thomas Terrell is, is, is a great post up player, but he's not going to get much inside today. But he's also the team's best three point shooter at 40%. So he has the ability to go outside and shoot it from outside. That might be something that'll open up things for him. Only two for Terrell, averaging just under 17 a game. I think Lefty's hoping that he's going to find uh, find his game somewhere. Ter Terrell only one of eight in this game. And he was only one of ten in game one against Wisconsin. So here's a guy that uh, they need to have step up. But I like Cooper. Now Cooper's been playing extremely well the last two games. Danny Miller picked up the foul. That's three. Loose ball on the deck. Can't bring it down when those little guards. I just mentioned when you're a guard, they get down and they dig. Yep. Yep. Oh, Gary Williams walked away in disgust. Close game at Boise. 11.54 to go. Terrapins by six.
32-27 UCLA. UCLA this half, one of five. Two turnovers, two points, and eight possessions. Watson is out there. Court pressure now by the Aggies. They'll drop back. The zone has been effective. Slowed UCLA down. Standing too much on the offensive end, this Bruins squad. Need more movement. Zone's very effective if you just stay in. Haig is in for Joyce, and here comes Capono, guarded by Rock. In to get Zurich. Good fake on Vague. Short on the shot. Watson is there to vacuum it in and put it down. Seems to be in the right place at the right time, Earl Watson. They need a score. He seems to come up somehow with it. Comes a drive by Bob and a UCLA foul on Ray Young. Young picks up his first. Deion Bailey will come back in, taking the place of Curtis Bob. So Brown, Daniels, Rock, Bailey, and Vane for the Aggies of Utah State. And if you, UCLA, you must be careful trying to turn up the pressure, but again. Utah State has outstanding shooters. They've not shot the ball well this afternoon, but they're going to get more looks, especially this guy right here. Here comes Daniels, pounding his way inside and launches the shot. Will not drop. He'll go to the free throw line as he was fouled on the play. Good things happen for this Aggie ball club when Sean Daniels touches the ball. Either makes good passes. Ball fake there. As you mentioned earlier, a 44% free throw shooter. So it was an important that that ball went in the basket. Yes. Brings the socks up to just below his knee. Foul, by the way, was called on UCLA's Matt Barnes. His second. Second free throw, no good. And an 11th rebound by Gantzer. UCLA has been more effective against this man and man defense when put on by the Aggies. Rock gets the foul for the Aggies. That's his third. And he has been very effective today. Two points, one of four. One rebound and two assists. Now remember, he turned it up the second half against Ohio State on Thursday. More aggressive with the ball. 14 minutes left. Need some of that juice right now. Yes, they do. Pono, Watson, Young, Gad, Zurich, and Barnes, the UCLA five, shooting 41%, 22% shooting for Utah State. As that zone stretches against the ball has not entered in that pain area. Where they're doing a lot of damage until right now, Gad Zurich has scooped it off. Dropped by Barnes, picked up by Vague. Lightning quick Bernard Rock feeds to Tony Brown, who shifts gears, kicks it back to Rock for three. Best execution of the afternoon by Utah State. Down by four and shooting 24%. Unbelievable. Closest the game has been since 11 to 9 in the first half. Watson to Capono. Young. That's where the danger area is in. You have to get it there. It makes the defense shift. They have to come in. You find more avenues. Good finish by Capone. He's got eight. Right at that free throw line just below it. If you can get the ball in there, that zone defense has to collapse. You'll find a lot of openings. Bailey inside to Daniels. And again, the penetration there for Utah State. Down again by four. Here comes Watson out to Capona. Capono for three. Oh, right between the eyes. Yeah, what a release. Catch, shoot. Terrific form, good finish. He's got 11. Big shot for UCLA. Seven point through and lead. Bailey around the screen. 
Outside Brown, good screen by Fade. Missed shot. UCLA is plus six in rebounding today. A Watson pass to Young, who took one too many steps in his call for the travel. Second round, the winner goes to the Sweet 16. It's UCLA by seven. Been ranked, and uh, they've been in some tough situations, so it's going to be tough for Georgia State if they don't really get on the execution end and rebound better. Slice it inside, rejected. Was that Morris? Got the hand up and a whistle. Well, we talked about Terrence Morris, and he's been active. Not worried about his points, but really active on the defensive end today. Some major blocks. When you look at the Maryland Turpins, they're really together. They're happy there as they get into their little huddle. Tough trip to Boise for, for Campbell. Bam Campbell fouled out against Wisconsin. He's out at the 10 11 mark. He's rugged. He's a rugged player that really needs to you know, learn how to settle his game down. But what a contribution he made for Lefty in his first NCAA tournament. Nothing to be ashamed of. Foul trouble, James. A concern for Lefty. Terrell with four, and now Gunsby, who comes in for Campbell, he's going to play with four. Well, Lefty has no choice. He has to go with the big bodies. If you look at Georgia State's foul trouble, Campbell is out of the ball game. The next big guy, Gunsby, has four. So Maryland depth is what can wear you down. They come with so many weapons. Fatigue is a factor when you have to guard players that are coming in fresh. Maryland in the first half, four of ten from the uh, free throw line. This half, nine of eleven. Gunsby, tough shot, turn around. The tip wouldn't go. Long, still battling. Look at it. Traffic grabs a loose ball to Cooper. Three pointer wouldn't go. Gunsby tried to rebound and a whistle on Baxter. Now one thing about Georgia State now they're not going to stop playing just because they're in foul trouble and because they're down. A lot of pride in this ball club. Junior transfers who have some experience they want to prove themselves. So they're not going to just lie down because Maryland's been on a big run. Foul trouble however is an issue for lefty. Gunsby only 45 percent. Toes the line and sinks the first. Gunsby with five off the bench. 25 years old. Spent three years in the military service. A couple years in Atlanta Metro Junior College. He was a satellite communications technician in the Air Force. Well, he just knocked down two free throws. 63-51, Maryland. Under 10 minutes. Blake backs it out. See, Maryland is executing right now. If you look at the strong side, you're going to find something happening on the weak side. They have the tall guys up front, and the guards are running the baseline. That's a unique. There's Dixon on the weak side, Blake on one side. They do a good job of letting their big people be the trigger man. They milk this shot clock down to about seven. Good defense by Georgia State, though. Baxter sets the beautiful pick. Blake the floor and banks it. Boy. You see that play so much. It was good help by Gunsby, but he didn't tighten up the trap, and Blake was able to split it right down the middle. 14 point lead. Miller, the taller guy, has done an excellent job on long. Greg Gumbel in New York. Georgia State now falling behind Maryland 65 51. We'll keep track of that game for you. Meanwhile, Utah State, which trailed by 11 at halftime, has pulled over within five of UCLA. Let's take you to Greensboro. Kevin Harlan and John Sunvold. And Zurich took it inside, but was fouled on the play by Jeremy Vague. UCLA leading 41 to 36 at one stretch of the first half. Utah State missed 21 consecutive shots, and they shot in the team in the first half. But halftime talk. Maryland and Georgia State. Let's join Craig Bullerjack and James Worthy. 2:47 left. Clock running. 73-60. Maryland try to move on to the Sweet 16. They have pounded the boards. And Maryland has pounded the ball inside most of the afternoon to guys like Baxter and Miller. Blake has done an excellent job of finding them inside. They've been able to penetrate. Oh. 
the defense of Georgia State just like that most of the second half. So doing an excellent job of getting in the interior and dishing off. I can't tell you how many layups Baxter has had off of that same move. Terrence Morris after that tough game on Thursday against George Mason rallying in this game for 14 points. Another missed shot by Georgia State and the clock now. The enemy of Lefty Drizel. 204 left. And a timeout. Maryland. The third seed of the West with a 15 point lead in Boise. First game of our doubleheader here in Boise, Maryland, the third seed leading Georgia State. And look at this, all of a sudden, Boise, Idaho has become Hampton, Idaho. Second game will match Hampton against Georgetown. Hampton, a team that knocked off the two seed Thursday, Iowa State. <laughs> I got to tell you, and they're not only representing their school, but they're representing the whole conference down there in the MIAC. Under two minutes left, Miller to the corner. Second half field goal. Georgia State only hitting 7 of 22, while Maryland has hit 10 of 24. Blake had a good look. Bottom of the net. Steve Blake is, has really taken care of the ball for Maryland. And this is the Maryland basketball team that we've been accustomed to seeing most of the year. They're very deep. They do a good job of executing. And, you know, that Cinderella may be alive in the first round, but usually in that second game, boy, I tell you what, teams recognize that they have to come out ready to play because these mid-major teams are so wanting to win. Maryland crowd up on their feet here in Boise. Dixon against Cooper. The floater around. Baxter the rebound. And fresh time on the shot clock. Baxter has been the difference inside today. Wasn't in the first game, but he's been very active inside today. James. Gary Williams we talked to him yesterday he knew the pressure the concern lefty the he talked all about it. this has to be a, a huge win a huge relief it was a lot of stress for him you know a lot of people remember lefty and also the fact that George Mason is in the area along with Georgetown all kind of possibilities as Baxter really puts the finishes touches on a Georgia State team that has nothing to be ashamed of. They played extremely well to get here, upset a tough slowdown Wisconsin's team. They give it all they all they have. And you know, Lefty's done a good job of rebuilding the program that was non-existent before his arrival. Maryland advances. Sweet 16. The Terrapins. Final seconds tick down at Boise. And they'll walk out of here with a 79 to 60 win. So here in Boise, Maryland will move on. And coming up next, it will be Hampton taking on Georgetown. Our Chevrolet MVP, Shenard Long for Georgia State, 20 points, six rebounds, with seven of 20 from the floor. Juan Dixon really led Maryland, ran, running the point with 14 points, six assists, and four steals. We'll take a break. The final again, Maryland 79 to 60. And after this break, we'll take you back to New York and Great Gumble. So long from Boise, Idaho. Well, it's easy to figure out why UCLA is winning 52% to 27%, and 43 rebounds to 30. Well, and it's hard for the Aggies to force the issue defensively. They'll have a hard time pressing, trying to get back in. They're knocking a few threes. But... In the game now is Thomas Vincent, who's a freshman from Overland Park, Kansas. Pono is defending him. Squeeze it inside to Chad Evans, a redshirt freshman, as they begin to clear the bench on the Utah State side. We welcome you back to our studios here in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg after watching the Terps of Maryland knock off Georgia State by a score of 79 to 60. And uh, this game, Clark, was uh, it was the stuff of which fantasy was made. Lefty Drizel going up against Maryland, but the Terps had the better ball call. They certainly did. They were able to take advantage of their size and depth inside. The guards were outstanding defending the three-point shot from Georgia State, and it was just a matter of time before the Terrapins pulled away. All right, the next round of our games, the next wave of our games looks like this. Coming up at 5. 
5.30. Southern Cal and Boston College will tip in the east. 5.38 in the west, it'll be Kent State and Cincinnati and Hampton and Georgetown will tip at about 5.45 Eastern time. Earlier today, the Duke Blue Devils moved on. 94-81 over Missouri. Jason Williams had 31. Shane Battier added 27. And in action right now, Utah State and UCLA fighting to see who will play Duke right now. It looks like it's Bruins. 62-45, under three minutes to play in regulation. Let's take you to Greensboro for the finish of that game. Kevin Harlan and John Sunville. Well, Utah State gave it a shot coming out of halftime. Got close, but... UCLA turned a notch on their intensity like they did against Hofstra on Thursday. They watched the shooting of the Aggies dip now to 27 percent. One stretch in the first half. Utah State missed 21 consecutive shots. And the number 12 seed Aggies who upset Ohio State in overtime. They're down now 62 to 47. Already from this region, Duke has advanced to the Sweet 16 with a thrilling win over the Missouri Tigers in their first game here today. In this game, Earl Watson has been fantastic for the Bruins. 16 points, 9 rebounds. And Dan Ganzurk has collected 14 rebounds, put in 16 points, and blocked four shots for UCLA. So the matchup with Duke. Watson, Jason Williams. Oh, terrific outside. It'll be a blur. They go inside for Bag. TJ Cummings, the son of Terry Cummings. Lasso's the ball. Here comes Capono. Outside for three. Good! The leading scorer for the Bruins, Jason Capono, drills his fifth three-point shot today. And his stroke looks good. Did not shoot it that well on Thursday. Did not get many shots. Didn't start this ball game. He's got it going. 19 points. Tony Brown here is a guy that did not get it going for the yeah, tough Aggies. afternoon. Yeah, he was the key to shoot from outside. Only a junior. He will be back next season. Steve Lavin has been uh, facing bullets, John, all season long, and uh, nothing different. He faced a lot of bullets in that game against Hofstra on Thursday, survived and advanced, and he's going to survive here and play Duke in Philadelphia next week in the Sweet 16. Well, Pac-10 Coach of the Year. Sweet 16, three of the last four, and I'll make it four of the last five seasons. He will go nine and four as a coach in the NCAAs. Fifth season at UCLA. Maryland is one and Duke is one and UCLA is on the road to Philadelphia coming up next USC will take on Boston College Kent State will play Cincinnati and Hampton will take on Georgetown those are the three games coming up next for your region around the country and Evans doesn't hit the second one and Cummings is there to vacuum in the rebound. against Hofstra. A game like this was much needed as they advanced. Well, and they will get, a di again, a different game with Duke. They played Hofstra and Utah State, both controlled the tempo, play a lot of zone defense, had to slow this UCLA team down. Both teams were effective in doing that. UCLA had the good enough spurts, long enough spurts to win both these ball games, and this one handily. Ray Young got the two at the other end. Here's Brown off his fingertips and out of bounds. And Utah State sloppily trying to finish this game. So Duke beats Missouri. They advance and UCLA taking care of the Yankees of Utah State. And they will play in Philadelphia, the one seed against the four seed in the East region. The ball, Jason Flowers, who was starting in the middle of the year, and they were one time six and zero with him as the starting point guard. Ramasar on top to Young for three, caught by Billy Knight and whacked inside by Vague. A tired ball club. They have been studying. They've got to go back for finals. Yeah. They start Monday. How about that? Then Study hall. They have breakfast. Uh, they clear off the breakfast breakfast plates, and uh, books come out. It's a lot of work. A lot of hard work. And then they've got to travel back across the country yeah. to Philadelphia. Tough. Which will be tough on the Bruins, but uh, that's the price you pay when the team is advancing, and that's exactly what they are. As you look at three of the main components. With their success today, Watson, Gedzurek, and Jason Capone. 
And Knight hits it again. Cabono didn't start because he missed study hall last night. Came off the bench about midway through the first half. And he has led the Bruins today with his team high 19 points. Brown had it knocked away. Picked up by Flowers, who races to the other end and seals a UCLA win. Now, terrific season for Utah State. Coming out of the Big West. 28 wins, only six defeats. Billy Knight gets it now as Utah State begins to crumble for the trailing Ramasar who puts it down. Another UCLA steal. Then Brown retrieves it. Evans inside. The freshman from Ogden, Utah, slams it in. UCLA destroys Utah State today, 75 to 50. And UCLA advances to the Sweet 16. Chevy players of the game, Sean Daniels and Dan Gadzurek. Special thanks to Vic Frank, along with our director, Steve Milton, and our statistician today and through the tournament, Ryan Taylor. And now for Charles Davis and John Sunbold, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Greensboro, North Carolina, UCLA and Duke advance to the Sweet 16. Greg Gumbel in New York. Here's what's coming up. Everybody's off to Uniondale for USC and Boston College. Those of you headed for Kent State and Cincinnati, your tip time will be 538. Hampton and Georgetown tips at 545. You're off to Uniondale first, however, right after this. Who's winning any game CBS right now? Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Bud Light. Direct TV. Agilent Technologies and by Mercedes-Benz.